Hi, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Sentimental Value Podcast. I am your host, Sincerely Sadrina, and today we obviously have a little different um, of a setup today, but difference is good. We need to lean more into the uncommon and the unknown because once we relinquish the expectation of what we think something should be, we allow what it shall be to actually come into fruition. So with a new atmosphere, it calls for a new attitude so today i am in my all black right i'm dressed up like a ninja because we are going to war today okay we are fully clothed in the armor of god right for the combat right the battle is not ours right it's the lord's and again i'm pretty sure you guys already saw the disclaimer at the beginning of the episode but again just for those that don't want to read but just want to hear it verbally Tonight's episode is going to be, and I know I always say a good one, right? A great one, but it's going to be a real one. Okay. We're going to have a real conversation today. And every conversation that we have on Sensual Mental Value Podcast is a real one, but this one is going to be realer than real. It's going to be raw. Okay. It's going to be raw. And if anyone knows anything about rawness, sometimes, most of the time, it's uncomfortable, right? When something becomes a little raw, like, you know, when you have a cold and you keep messing with your nose and blowing your nose and, you know, touching it and scratching it and doing all that, it becomes a little raw. It comes a little chafed, right? It hurts a little, right? You're taking off a layer. That's what we're doing in this episode, okay? So, you know, every episode is attached to a book. You guys know I'm a really big bookworm. So, tonight's book, right? Tonight's episode is a wonderful book that I have had in my collection for a very long time. And to be very honest, raw, real, transparent, honest, I didn't pick it up and I didn't read it. And not because I didn't want to, but because I wasn't ready. <laughs> and in tonight's episode, we're going to get ready, right? The unreadiness, the the unwillingness, the just the, the fight or flight and or freeze that we have been in. Tonight, we're going to fly. Tonight, we're going to soar, which is going to take for you to jump out of the window, to jump out of the nest, to let go of the bottom, right? In tonight's episode, the floor is about to become the ceiling, okay? We're literally about to unpack who we are, what we are, and why we are. So on tonight's episode, it covers the book by the one and only Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Bruce D. Perry. It is entitled, What Happened to You? Hmm. What happened to you? Sincerely, what happened to you? Not what's wrong with you, right? Because as adults, even against other adults, shamefully, even as adults against other children and naively as children against children, we are always scratching the surface of what happened? Like what, what, or not what happened, right? That's the real question. Not what happened. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What what's wrong with you? What why are you acting like that? Why are you talking like that? Why are you behaving like that? Why aren't you doing this? Why do you do this in this particular way? Right? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? When the real question is what happened? What happened? What happened to you to make you like this? What happened to you to make you react in this way? What happened to you to rob you of your reaction? Why are you so cold? <laughs> Why are you so cold? Why are you so quiet? Why are you so loud? Why are you so quick to anger? Why are you so fast to dismiss someone? Why are you so adamant on staying connected to someone? Why does it take you so long to let go? Why are you so quick to let go 
these are real questions. Again, when we see people as humans, right? I don't even go beyond humans. Even when we see animals. And and what's wrong with that dog? Why is that dog all over the place? Why all the Cuz the dog probably is a rehomed dog that's never known stability. So you bringing it into a house of structure causes a little bit more chaos. Right. So going back to the piece of literature, what happened to you? What happened to you? It's a conversation on trauma, resilience and healing. So, again, the disclaimer is in tonight's episode, we're going to unpack trauma. We're going to talk about abuse. Neglect, abandonment. And guess what? Tonight you are going to be triggered. You're going to be triggered. And guess what? The trigger means nothing if the gun is not loaded. We're going to unpack the bullets. We're going to unpack the bullets. We are going to stop pointing the gun at other people or at ourselves. At ourselves. We're going to learn, right? Those bullets, those pellets that we put in the gun or someone else put into us. When that trigger goes off, that's why if you if you're someone that has a gun, right? I have a void car, you know, I believe, you know, especially as a woman, you should learn how to operate a gun. As Americans, we have the right to bear arms, right? But the dangerous thing is not the gun. It's the person that has it. <laughs> it's the person that has it and when they have it. And when they choose to use it. And a lot of people don't have enough control over themselves because we control nothing but ourselves, but ourselves. So when you don't have control over self, that's what makes the gun dangerous. So again, tonight you are going to be triggered, but you want to know something? We're going to get through it because we always do, right? We're going to stumble, right? But we aren't going to stop. We're going to cry a little bit. If you have to put it on pause, audio wise, if you have to put it on pause, visually, you do what you need to do. However, tonight we're going to do what needs to be done. And we are going to unpack our trauma. We're going to talk about our healing and we are going to become resilient, not only with the help of Dr. Bruce Perry and Miss Oprah Winfrey and yours truly, sincerely, Sadrina, but most importantly from you, because you have the power. You have the power. You just have to reconstruct your definition of power and your application of power, your placement of power, using your power for positivity and not for the detriment, understanding that you have to let go to grasp on to what is next. We're going to forgive. <laughs> We're going to forget because that's what your brain does. Anyways, we're going to unpack what trauma really does to you on a bodily level right on a mental level on a cognitive level on an emotional level on a spiritual level on a social level right so then we can stop asking people the infamous question of what's wrong with you and we're going to start asking the real question of what happened to you so again on tonight's episode we are now going to talk about trauma healing and resiliency so stay tuned All right, guys, so welcome back to Sentimental Value Podcast. I know that that intro was intense, right? But it has to be intense, baby, because we're about to birth something. So we're going to go through a little bit of labor pain, okay? Um, I want to start off this episode shouting out my sponsors, shouting out my sponsors. If you guys don't know about Afro Health, right, you need to get to know. Make sure you follow them on all social media platforms. They have a multivitamin for women and men that addresses your vitamin D deficiency. It gives you all of those proper nutrition values that you need okay we have to learn how to take care of ourselves we have to learn how to take care of ourselves and that starts with what we put in our body 
right? And that goes into any entryway, whether that's your mouth with what you eat, your eyes with what you see, your ears with what you hear, even your nose with what you smell. Like, you know, I'm learning how to pay attention to my senses, right? Like everyone says, come to your senses or pay attention to your senses, but you don't pay attention to your senses. And that's why your senses betray you. Every time. That's why what it looked like is not what it is. You hear what you want to hear. All that good stuff. See, all of these phrases and these quotes and these sayings, they actually mean a lot. They actually mean a lot. So again, shout out to the sponsors, Afro Health. Please be sure to check them out. I have a code of my own, S for sentimental, V for value, P for podcast, SVP. We'll have Colton put it under here. SVP, I believe, gets you 30% off. That's really, really good. Simplistic math, you buy $100 worth of vitamins, you get $30 off. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. The more you spend, the more you save. If you only buy $30 worth of stuff, you're only going to get what? I don't know, Colton, let's do some math. We'll do some little numbers right here. <laughs> but again, I want you to spend $100 with them, right? Spend that big bill, spend that blue bill with them because they're black owned, right? They're black owned and they're focusing on our wellness, you guys, which goes into the episode, right? We're having the conversation of what happened to you. So let's go health wise. When you see someone that's bent out of shape, Literally and figuratively, you see someone that's not healthy. That didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't. So again, what happened to make this person 600 pounds, right? What happened that this person um, developed heart disease or diabetes? What happened? The body is very sequential like everything happens in a sequence everything happens in stages nothing happens overnight we like to believe that that's a victim mentality right when did this happen oh my god I just woke up I just turned around every time I turn around it's something so I'm gonna stop turning around no no you need to turn around and you need to face yourself you need to face yourself because what happens is when we don't do our due diligence right when we really do not challenge ourselves and our habits and our behaviors that, again, we've discussed this on previous episodes, they aren't ours, right? Initially, but we're responsible for how we continue them, right? We take a sense of ownership because to play the victim is the easiest role. To play the victim is the easiest role. That's why people subconsciously love a villain, it's hard to go against the status quo. It's hard to play that ugly role, but actually it's quite easy because a lot of us are way uglier than we appear. That's why they say, you know, you can't trust the eye and you can't, you know, that evil eye, that's a real thing. That third eye, that chakra, you have to start looking at things on a spiritual level when they don't make sense in the physical. So you guys know I love to start off every episode with a few quotes. We're gonna get into some quotes and some definitions, okay? We're gonna start defining some things. We're gonna start decreeing and declaring, putting a name on it, calling a thing a thing. If it's an ace of spade, guess what? It is an ace of spade. We're not gonna call it a club. It's not a club, it's not a heart. It's no, we're gonna call a thing a thing. And again, this episode might be a little much for you, but it's everything and more that you need and you deserve. And that you really are long overdue for long overdue. Again, I say in this season, I'm not about to play with you. I can't play with you guys anymore because I'm done playing with myself. These are conversations that I have with myself. See, I can't lie to me. <laughs> I can't lie to me even when I want to lie, even when I want to lie. I know the truth, whether I choose to face it or not. And the cool thing about the truth, like they say, it will set you free and everything that's done in the dark comes to the light eventually. A lot of people that are in the dark, that love the darkness, that's why they flee from the light. They hate the light. But what happens when you become the light? What happens, right? You heal, you become resilient. And guess what? Your trauma, your trauma does not bury you anymore. It plants you and you grow. So starting here, the first quote 
is by Dr. Phil, right? Good segue from Oprah. Dr. Phil is quoted, instead of being ashamed of what you've been through, be proud of what you have become. Instead of being ashamed of what you've been through, let's unpack that. What is shame? What is shame? Shame is I don't want you to see me. Shame is I don't want you to know. Shame is I'm embarrassed, right? But of what? Because you've lived, because you've learned a lot of the things that we are so egotistically ashamed of as humans I guarantee you it not only sets you free when you start addressing them but it sets someone else free when you start addressing them when you really start putting that light on that dark area right almost like a roach it's gonna crawl out it's gonna scatter it's gonna because it never thought right it, and that's why it's such a rush and it's such a scurry because it never thought when it was festering in the dark that guess what that light switch was going to come on, right? And this is not a dimmer. You cannot set this. You cannot gauge this. It's all or nothing. Let there be light, right? Instead of being ashamed, embarrassed, um, scared of what you've been through, be proud of what you've became. See, the beauty of the journey is not that final destination. It was the trail. It was the full experience. It's what you become in the process. No one cares about the final result, no one is rushing to the end. And most people that rush to the end rob themselves of the experience. So again, instead of being ashamed that someone did not do right by you, instead of being ashamed that someone used and abused you, talked to you crazy, put their hands on you, emotionally disregarded you, sexually overpowered you. Instead of you being ashamed of that, let's take ownership of it, right? And not because you were in the wrong, right? But understanding that a lot of people don't know what right looks like. And that is what we're unpacking in this book. A lot of our parents that we are so upset about, we forget that they are people. And guess what? Those people had another set of people that failed them. So guess what? It just goes down. You ever seen the... um? Two balls where it's literally six of them, but that first ball, when it hits, none of the ones in between move except for the last one. That's what generational trauma is. Again, Dr. Phil is quoted, instead of being ashamed of what you've been through, I need you to be proud of what you've become. So guess what? All of that pressure that weighed you down as a kid actually equated to the powerful adult that you became, that you became. Going back to a previous episode on the power of discipline, when people are in the gym and they're getting ripped, it does exactly what it says. It tears you to shreds. That's what it does. It hurts. It hurts like hell. It hurts. It hurts. And some of the best things, right, going back to birthing, some of the best things in order for you to get them, you're going to have to hurt a little bit. You're going to have to hurt a little bit because that is the beauty of God. I know a lot of people feel so betrayed by God. They say, oh, if God loved me, why would they let this person abandon me? If they love me, why would they let this person mistreat me? Why? If, if God loved me, if God, because God loved you, he allowed that to happen to you. He trusted you with that experience. Think about it like that. He trusted you. Somebody else would have killed someone or damn near killed themselves. But instead, it actually birthed something else living inside of you. And it gives another group of people a reason to live. Hmm. A quote on resiliency. Maya Angelou, I've quoted her before. You gotta love Maya Angelou. Uh, Maya Angelou is quoted, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. Again, Maya Angelou says, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. Change is the only thing that is constant. That is the only thing that's going to happen. You can bet your bottom dollar something is going to change. You can bet your bottom dollar that something, someone, somewhere is going to change. Change is going to take place. OK, but change does not always equate to growth. They are not mutually exclusive. So you can get change, but that doesn't promise you growth. Right. And I believe when you think of growth, you think of addition, multiplication. 
You don't think of the division. You don't think of the subtraction. You do not have to be reduced, right? By any experience that you have. If anything, the more experiences you have, the more you get out of life. If you don't go through it, and I mean really go through it. I don't mean come upon it and then try to go around it and under it. And all. I'm talking about when you really get through something, you get a little bit more, right? The slashes on you, they mean a little bit more. Those scars, they tell a story. They tell a story. You have a lot more to your mind, to your heart, to your soul, to your spirit. When people always ask me like, oh my God, Sadrina, I really love your personality. I love your, you know, energy and your intensity. It's because I'm traumatized. <laughs> I've been through some stuff. I've been through the fire. Literally, I've been through the fire and the rain. OK, and I didn't allow it to reduce me. If anything, right, if I'm gonna go through the storm, I'm gonna get my story. I deserve my story. You deserve your story. You don't endure the rain and don't walk away with your story. And when you get your story, you share it. You don't get you don't get the privilege to experience something and then you just keep it for yourself. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for you. I know you selfishly want to believe that. But your pain, your sacrifice, your trauma, it wasn't for you. It wasn't for you and it will never be for you. It will always be for others. Again, that addition, right? You reduce it. You reduce the experience. You reduce the totality of it positively or negatively by thinking, oh, it's just for me. I'm just going to hold on. No, you give it. You give it. So again, we can't change the past. We can't change who hurt and harmed us. We can't change the fact that sometimes we were the person that hurt and harmed us. We cannot change what we did not learn, right? But we can be responsible for what we know now. We are responsible for our own growth. We are responsible for once we know better than we do better. See, we want to hold people like tie, tie them down. I'm talking about harness and restrain someone to their own ignorance. Someone else didn't know. And that's why they didn't do. But you do know. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And then you want the excuse, right? It goes back to the victim mentality. So... With those quotes about trauma and resiliency, right? And again, we're bookworms here. We're, I hate the word nerd, but I guess for lack of better words, right? For someone who head is buried into a book, someone who really loves to learn, a scholar at heart, a student of the game, right? We can never shy away from definitions. <laughs> it is what it is, right? But a lot of us don't know what it is. And that's okay. That's okay. Because that's what I'm here for. So... Trauma, trauma is defined, right? I love the second definition. And this is coming from the Oxford language um, literature. In the medical field, trauma is defined as a physical injury. In the medical field, okay? That's the second definition. You know, they always give you multiple ones. Um, if it had a picture next to it, it would be me. <laughs> um, but again, in medicine, it's a physical injury. But when you go through trauma, especially as a child, even when a child is abused physically, the injury is way more deeper than skin. Way deeper than physical, the body. Right. So the first definition for trauma is a deeply distressed or disturbing experience. Deeply distressed. Disturbing. Right. When someone says that they have trauma, people think trauma is always over the top. <laughs> they think, oh, trauma is drama. Right. When someone thinks of trauma, you think of something that comes, you know, from your mama, from your daddy, from from an external person. A lot of people are their own trauma. We'll unpack that later as well. But a lot of people are their own trauma. Sincerely. So when you think of trauma, I like to break it down into quite a few different areas. Right. The timing of a trauma. 
<laughs> what exactly happened within the trauma? And then how long did the trauma continue? In real time or in like emotional, mental actuality, right? Because you can experience something in real time, almost like a car accident, boom, impact, right? Well, after the medics are off of the scene, you've got your little bodily treatment at the hospital. Now you're going back and forth with insurance, right? You're at home in your bed. There's still a lot to unpack about that trauma. That trauma is still running like a clock. It's still running. It's still running. Um, next definition, healing. So similar to a bodily physical injury with trauma or something of the emotional, metaphysical, mental, emotional state. After you have a trauma, right? When the body hits itself, it's cut, it's gashed, it's, it's harmed, it has to heal, right? And even though we know that the body is a magical thing, the human body can definitely do things that we don't give it enough credit to do or we actually come in between what it can do, right? But a lot of our healing has to be set up. All right. A lot of us are not in conducive atmospheres or even in the right mindset to properly heal. And that's why healing is so complex, because you can do something in one season that maybe was healing you in that season. But guess what? It's hindering you in the next season. You're doing something that maybe is healing to someone else. But guess what? It's not. It's hurting you. It's hurting you. It's, it's not healing. It can look like it's healing. It could even feel like it's healing. But in all actuality, it's not. It's not. So healing is defined, right? The process of making or becoming sound and healthy again. Tending to. Therapeutic. Healing is such a complex thing. We're going to have a whole nother episode on healing. But healing is something that is not fun. I know it's trendy right now. Everyone loves a good healing story. Oh, I'm healing. Oh, I'm healing. Real healing hurts before it starts actually truly feeling good healing looks very confusing healing is something that really takes for you to do it by yourself and that's the reason why i said even with the body we think we have to go to the hospital and be around all these people and share the experience to really heal no really you need to be by yourself when you heal because i can guarantee you whatever was hurting you you dealt with that and that festered by yourself by yourself and or the people that you are trying to heal from and or with are the very people that you were hurting with and or are trying to heal from is it's such a complex thing but again it is the process of making or becoming sound and healthy again last um definition resilience Resilience is a word that I learned later in life. It was in my 20s. It was actually at a Fortune 500 company that I was working for. And they had a person come in to do motivational like work. And the topic was on being resilient. And resilience is defined as the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. It's a toughness. It's a mental toughness right the secondary definition is the ability of a substance or object to spring back in the shape elasticity you don't know how elastic you are how far you can stretch until you get stretched to stretch especially when you haven't done it before or in a long time it hurts <laughs> ask anyone who's done yoga yoga or pilates <laughs> looks easy hardest thing you could ever do hardest thing you could ever do because that stretch is a pull Sometimes the pull in one place is a push in another place. That's why the whole idea of springing back to spring forward is something that a lot of people say, but they don't really get. Because in order for you to fly forward, you have to pull back. You have to pull back on some of your old habits. You have to pull back on some of your old thought processes. You are gonna have to pull back on some of your old beliefs. Not meaning that those things didn't serve a purpose in one season, but we know that winter coat that we wear in the winter serves no purpose. It's actually a detriment to us. You'll fall out. You'll pass out if you try to wear it in the summer. You have to change your armor. You have to change your clothing, how you dress, how you address yourself, how you even undress yourself. 
You have to think about it in a bigger aspect. And again, I'm giving you guys these quotes, these definitions, because we haven't even touched the book yet. <laughs> we haven't even touched the book yet, but we will. And hopefully by the end of this episode, you'll be touched enough to be willing to touch someone else's head and heart. A lot of us don't want to deal with other people's trauma and drama because we haven't dealt with our own. A lot of us can't help heal other people because we haven't learned how to heal ourselves. A lot of us can't even recognize resiliency in someone else because we've never seen it amongst ourselves. Tonight, we're going to see a lot. We're going to feel a lot. And most importantly, we're going to understand that a lot is necessary. And when you're tired of being tired and a lot becomes a little too much, you're going to understand how to take back, how to scale back, how to cut back how to cut down on some of your own trauma responses and your own triggers and your own stress indicators and ultimately get to a version of yourself that I promise you, your inner child will be so proud. Your inner child that's screaming out at other people is crying out for you to do the work that's needed for you to become the version of yourselves that they know you can be, that they know that you are. Are. Hi, lovies. It's Sincerely Sadrina from Sentimental Value Podcast, and I wanted to give a huge shout out to our official sponsor of season two, Afro Health. They are the only UK based brand that specializes in multivitamins made specifically for melanated people. If you did not know, 76% of melanated people that live north of the equator are vitamin D deficient. What they have done over at Afro Health, if they have made a B100 multivitamin, they also have hair and skin nail complement food supplements that are absolutely amazing, okay? It's not only going to up that vitamin D deficiency, but it is super packed with 26 essential vitamins and minerals that are gonna cover your nutritional day-to-day -day needs, okay? And not only that, they are vegan and non-GMO, okay? So make sure you head over to Afro Health. Let them know that Sincerely Sadrina sent you and enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're breaking this up into a few different um, parts because, again, I know this is a lot and a lot of people may not be ready. But if you waited until you were ready, nothing would get done. Right. What's the concept of even being ready? I don't know. Um, I wanted to also do some key quotes from the book before I start kind of unpacking a few chapters. Um, again, I know that this is a tough conversation because a lot of people come to my podcast and I appreciate everyone that comes to the podcast, whether you come with love, even if you come with a little bit of hate and a little bit of darkness, right? If you come to critique it in a way that's unfair, you come to just give it love that it probably doesn't even deserve quite yet because we're, it's a process, right? We're getting through it. I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm making mistakes. And most importantly, I'm remembering to have fun, you know, but I know we cover things like, oh yeah, passion and purpose and you know the magic of thinking big and the power of now. But when you pivot and you start talking about depression, anxiety, suicide, all of these symptoms, these are symptoms. People don't wake up just depressed. People don't wake up and live anxiously. People don't wake up and then hope that they never wake up again. OK, that doesn't just happen again. This is something that initial impact happened. Right. And some of us, we don't even remember. The impact we don't. We just remember something hurt somewhere. We're still hurting somewhere. And that's why substance abuse. And I'm not just talking about regular drugs and alcohol because too much of anything becomes a bad thing, 
Okay, whatever you are soothing, self-soothing with, whatever you are trying to knock the edge off with, whatever you're trying to calm, cool and collect yourself with, I'm guaranteeing you it feel good right now. Oh my God, it may feel so good right now. The high may be so high. Once upon a time, it was so high. That's why you're still chasing it because you don't want to deal with those lows. You get high because you don't want to deal with those lows. This is a safe space. This is a safe space. And guess what? We could be anything in the world. So why not be for real? Let's be for real. Let's get real. Okay. Again, people don't wake up with the symptoms. Okay. People don't just choose a night to go to bed with a certain symptom. It was a sequence. It was stages of something that occurred. So again, I know people come to the podcast, maybe to get a few ha 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 he he's. But again, like I said in the last episode, this is not funny and I'm not playing with you. And I'm tired of you playing with you. I'm tired of playing with you. I'm tired of playing with myself. We're going to have real conversations. And again, because a lot of us can't remember, we're trying to forget. We don't want to remember. We don't want to address it. We don't want to see it. We don't want to feel it again. We don't even want to know. Ignorance is bliss. We're running from it. We're running from ourselves. We're turning everywhere that's not like where we should be because it hurts. And because it's hard and because it's not fair. It's not it's not fair. Again, can't change what happened to you, but you can change how it affects you. You can change how it affects you. Your partner, maybe they did mean it. Maybe they didn't. Who cares? Who, who really cares at this point? Because do you care enough about you to take yourself out of the situation? And when I say out of the situation, I'm not talking about an actuality because a lot of people escape the trauma and the drama in the physical form. But guess what? It's still on you. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. It's, it's all on you. It's all on you. And what I'm trying to do, I'm not only trying to get it up off of you, I'm trying to get it up out of you. I'm trying to get it up out of you. So again, I know you probably didn't come for this, but you're going to stay for this. You're going to stay for this. You're going to stay for it because you deserve it. So some honorable quotes from the book, right? First one that I love that Oprah Winfrey said, and again, this book is by both Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Bruce Perry. He's like a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Like he works with children, though. I know that because, again, childhood trauma is a real thing. We may be walking around here grown as adults, but a lot of us are stuck at the age that we were hurt. We are stuck in the age that something happened. Yeah, my hard number is 32, but I'm still the five year old girl. That was hurt. Yeah, you may be 48, knocking on 50, but you are still the 15-year-old boy that was misunderstood. It's, it's, it's there. And again, it's on you and it's showing. Everyone else sees it. See, you think you playing a, a slick one and a, and a cool one, thinking that don't nobody know. No, we don't know the why behind the what, but we see what it is. We don't like what it is. We don't understand what it is. We want it to get from around us. And that's why getting close to people is such a big fear for people who have had trauma, because even though you mask it and you cover it up, it's going to spill out. See, that's why they say clean your room, clean your mess, clean your house, because when you keep stuffing things under a rug and throwing it in the closet, eventually it looks clean to the outside. But when someone really get in your house and they care about you and they start looking around <laughs> and they and it starts to spill out and it starts to pour this is a cleanup, a deep cleanse. This is not a pickup. This is not a, oh, I'm just tidying up. No, when you really clean, sometimes you have to destruct first. You have to clear house, clear the way before you rebuild. Okay, so this book is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. This is a dialogue. This is a conversation between Oprah and Dr. Perry. He's tying in right with all his theoretical knowledge and that's why it pays to be smart it pays to be smart literally and figuratively the more you know the more you grow right when you have information information knowledge is is key it's key but once you get a key you have to go through a door 
The key means nothing if you don't go to the door. The key is needed for something that is locked. These are keys, people. These are keys. So this conversation that they're having is so valuable for those that know that something is wrong, but you haven't figured out how to make it right. But just hearing Oprah's personal stories about her childhood trauma, about things that she went through as a young adult, as a young lady, right, that foreshadows the woman that she is right, wrong or indifferent and or who she could have been right, wrong and indifferent. And then Dr. Perry is giving her these theories and these models and these modules to truly explain what happened, what happened, making sense of it all. One of my best quotes from this book is if we want to understand the oak, it's back to the acorn. We must go. <laughs> so a lot of us, all of us are trees. Some may be living, some may be dead, some are wilted and withered, some are alive and thriving, some are in atmospheres and conditions that are conducive to who they are. Some of them have been uprooted and placed in places they should not be, right, for someone's personal enjoyment. <laughs> but again, if you want to understand the roots of the tree, if you want to understand the full oak, you have to go back to the acorn, go back to the seed, Okay. Even when we grow, when we change, it evolved from something. It evolved from something. And the crazy thing about a tree, people get so attached, right, to those branches and to those leaves that come and go, but it's the roots. It's what we don't see. It's what we don't see, right, that ends up producing the, the thick of the tree, the trunk, right, that is very hard to get rid of. They always say you want to get rid of the tree, you're going to have to get it at the trunk that trunk is very thick it's it's, it's it's the biggest root and branch of it because it holds everything up and together but do you know what a tree trunk goes through what it goes through and again it's something even under that right so again if you want to understand the oak the full tree you have to go back to the acorn right that's why they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree a lot of people are fruit dead fruit, wilted fruit, infested fruit, and they don't even know what tree they came from. They don't know what branch they came from, what vine they came from. They have no idea, no idea. And then people judge the fruit. They judge the fruit, not even understanding where it came from. Another quote by Bruce Perry, Dr. Bruce Perry, a lifelong set of beliefs and behaviors can emerge when trauma is experienced at a young age. Again, what happened to you? <laughs> you think you're grown, but you're childish in your behaviors. What happened to you challenges instead of us looking at an adult that has some type of reaction or some type of behavior, whether that be over the top, volatile, even people that kind of repress and dissociate and kind of go into themselves we say oh my god what's wrong with them something's wrong with them Some, something's wrong with all of us <laughs> sorry spoiler alert N none of us are normal this whole situation this whole assimilation this matrix this something is wrong with all of us and when we humble ourselves and understand that what's wrong with me isn't really as different as what is wrong with you we're all connected even when we try to disconnect, we're all connected. That set of beliefs and behaviors that you see an adult have, that came in their childhood. Something happened in their childhood. Somebody said something. Somebody put something in. Somebody took something out. Someone did something. Someone didn't do something. People really do put so much pressure on the parent that was absent, right? So the parent that was not there, right? Which again, going without the sense of lack, that has its detriment to you as a human, right? Because we're not supposed to go without, right? But the abandonment, yes, it's real. However, I can guarantee you a lot of adults overlook the present parent and what actually was around and what you picked up and what you learned, you so focused on what you didn't get. You don't even understand what you did get. You didn't even deserve. <laughs> what you did get, what you did get really meant nothing. It actually, maybe, maybe that person should have left you alone. Maybe you should have went without that because that is what created 
this. Again, I don't make the rules and I don't even care to play by them anymore because we have to have, again, a real conversation. Another quote, balance is the core of health. Balance is the core of health. OK, you're going to have the good and you're going to have the bad. OK, in your childhood, you're going to have some very good memories. Right. And you're going to have some bad ones. You're going to have some bad ones. A lot of bad experiences and memories are tied to good people. People that we love. That's Stockholm Syndrome. That's a real thing. <laughs> a lot of us wouldn't trade the what is for the what if, even if the what if is better than the what is. We feel and function best when our bodies are in balance. When we're in balance with our friends, with our family, with our sense of community, with our sense of self. When you see people that are all over the place, they're imbalanced. A lot of people are all over the place and can't get into place and can't get into position because they don't know what that looks like. My favorite thing to say when people ask me at 30 something years old, right? Why don't I have children? Because I'm still trying to wrap my head around and my kids have to play with your kids. Because you have kids raising kids. And I don't mean that again, in the hard age, I'm not talking about just a teenage mother, or I'm talking about someone that waited until 40 to have a kid, because at 40, you have all of your education, you have you've climbed the corporate ladder, you have the house, you have the car, but guess what, at 40, you still don't have any sense, you still have no emotional intelligence, you have no compassion, you have no understanding, you have no sense of help for self, you still still feel very helpless and hopeless within yourself. You have no sense of help and hope for other people. But you think just because you have it all on the outside, then that elects you to be a parent. And guess what? You're a four year old raising a four year old. <laughs> I just told my producer, I saw a piece of content that said the best mirror of yourself is your kid. When you blow up on your kid. Guess what? You're the bomb. You're the bomb. Because, and I don't mean that in a good way. Okay? Literally, your kid is just mirroring what you do. So when your kid acts a fool, it's because guess who the original fool is? It's not the baby. <laughs> it's not the baby. It's the adult. Ask any teacher. When a kid is showing out, the number one thing is something's going on at home. Because school, even the workplace, when you have a coworker that you cannot stand and it has a certain type of personality or characteristic trait, again, instead of judging them and saying, what's wrong with them today? No, what happened? Because I can guarantee you something happened at home before they got there. Something happened in the home that they grew up in that stunted their growth as an adult. The beauty of marriage, again, it's a mirror. That's why they say you have to, one, get with people that you're equally yoked with, but then you also have to understand being with someone that was raised on survival and then you're someone that was raised on love, you better be ready to be a teacher and a preacher. May God be with you. Jesus be a fence and a gate because this person that was raised on survival this person that doesn't know what love and kindness and patience looks like, all they know is to go to war. They, they, they are the veteran. They have PTSD. So even when you come with love and light, they're bracing this, themselves for impact. They're bracing. Guess what? They're coming with the impact. They're coming with the impact. Because guess what? They don't want to be caught off guard anymore. Connecting it from children to animals. You see a, you see a puppy that came from a loving home and came from a loving litter and all those other versus that puppy that came from the pound. Similar to a kid that comes out of DCFS, even for someone to get in there. That's why you cannot judge people. You cannot judge people when people think everyone in prison is a bad person. No, I really think it's more bad people walking around. It's just the people in prison got caught <laughs> and held accountable. And held accountable. But it's some great people that are in not so great places.
because they went through some not so good things. So when you have a friend who does not have positive language because they were raised in a household that yelled and cursed all the time. You trying to talk things out and mediate and, 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 and try to come to a conflict resolution. They don't know what that is. And because they don't know what that is, they don't trust it. And the sad thing about it, then we learn to trust things that are untrustworthy. So again, when you have a colleague that's in an abusive relationship and their person verbally attacks them physically attacks them psychologically emotional abuse is a big one that a lot of people think somebody have to go upside your head for them to hurt and harm you and it's a lot of people that are pulling you I mean like literally tussling tug and war with your emotions in which your thought process and your sense of self and your sense of worth and they are beating you up beating you down so then when you try to understand why does this person talk crazy to themselves or why does this person have a self-limiting belief system because that's what they were taught and then they were taught that from a child all they knew was their parents talking to them crazy or not talking to them at all so guess what they subconsciously choose a partner that talks to them wildly or talks to them oddly or really <laughs> not at all not at all not at all Another quote, we project into the world what basically happened to us as a child, going back to your hard age versus your inner child. When you meet someone who you feel like is emotionally immature, emotionally unintelligent, my favorite combination, right? This is the beauty of life because it's one big melting pot. So you don't know what variation you're going to get. I love when I meet people that are theoretically smart. And that's why this being a book that could have probably just been made by, you know, Dr. Bruce Perry. But he has not as a white male had the experiences as a black woman has had. Right. So when you think of trauma, even as women, as a gender and then a black woman sprinkling race on top of it, it's like you're double down. You're drowning in two derogative like categories because we're taught in this society to think okay women are beneath a man and then to be black you're underneath everyone and that's why they say the black woman is the most disrespected thing right and you know I don't get into a lot of trendy stuff but you know it's a bigger conversation that needs to be had on the representation of the black woman over here that stands for this and then the black woman over here that stands for that and when they're both a uh, full totality of the experiences just because you see someone behaving in one way does not mean they are always that one way I can guarantee you it's a behavior buried somewhere that they have either learned to accept and acknowledge or they have put on the back burner one that they're maybe a, a little ashamed of one that they're actually proud of because guess what we are who we are and who we are not, we will never be. And as humans, we try to become something else. As a woman, you're a woman. Be proud to be a woman. You can't be a man. I can guarantee you talk to any man, regardless of color and creed, he will tell you maybe outside of the monthly cycle they can go without, but they would love to take a break off of being a man. Because in the words of Chris Rock, no one cares about a man. <laughs> Everyone cares about babies, animals, women and old people. No one cares about a man. So again, everyone has their yin and their yang, right? Most people, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God could have made me anything in the world. I'm glad he made me a black woman, right? Because the adversity, right? The trauma, the healing that we have to do as a culture, that is what sets us up, set Oprah Winfrey up. It gives you a little bit of a, a different edge, and because everyone's trying to knock an edge off of something because a lot of people are afraid of the edge. But again, today is the day that I push you and you fly. You're so scared to fall and to fail. You've never even thought like, dang, what if I fly? Like, what if this works? What if it works? But you can't see it working because all you've seen is what didn't work. What didn't work, what didn't happen, what didn't come to you, what got taken from you. You can't even see beyond the experience and the impact and the impact. You guys know that I have a book club now. OK, it'll be in the bio of the YouTube. Shout out to my YouTube subscribers. If you are watching on YouTube right now, subscribe. 
subscribe hit the subscribe button you guys okay if you love what you're seeing what you're feeling right you need more of it make sure you subscribe and with that being said i've knocked the mic <laughs> for the umpteenth time but i do have a book club officially now so all of the books that have been covered in all of the previous episodes are in an amazon link you can purchase the book we're going to eventually get into live tapings and different things like that so i would love for you guys to get the pieces of literature so you can follow along this book will be added you know, I'm not going to give you guys the full book, um, but honorable mentions from the chapters, again, making sense of the world, right? The world is not really the world. It's our world. It's our shaped perceptions and a full like some of our experiences, right? My world doesn't look like your world. And that's why it's very important to step into someone else's world. And then again, to understand the universe, right? All of these different worlds and planets are omnipresent and they're all connected and they're all necessary. It's necessary for you and another chapter connecting the dots, right? People are so afraid to connect the dots because you don't want to see that bigger picture. A lot of people are holding on to the one little puzzle piece that they don't have when you don't want to look at the full picture because I guarantee you, if you look at the full picture, even without a few of those pieces, you'll understand them. And guess what? You really don't even need them. You don't need them, but you're scared to finish that puzzle or to go to the next puzzle because you want to hold on to that little bitty piece. Another chapter going from coping to healing. Again, you think what you're doing is healing. You're coping and you're going out bad and sad. It's not good. It's not good for you. Our brains, our biases, our systems. Our brain, our biases, our systems. We create these systems as a way to survive. And yes, maybe it worked in that area of your life and it got you to the next point. But guess what? You ain't going to get to the point after that if you stay in that survival mode. At some point, you have to live. You have to live and you have to live unapologetically. You have to live thoroughly. You have to want to live. You have to have a desire. They always say when you're tired of being tired, you will make a change. At some point, it, the light bulb has to go off to where you don't want to die anymore. You don't want to die anymore that you the only other thing to do then at that point is to live. It's to live. But we are so as a people so hyper focused and vigilant on death and the end. Right. And not appreciating the journey in between. We don't want to live. We don't want to live. And it shows it shows it shows it shows. And then another honorable um, chapter is the spectrum of trauma. It's a spectrum. It's a full spectrum. It's not just one isolated thing, sincerely. It's not one isolated thing, right? So going back to the timing of the trauma, when it happened, and how long did it happen? Those stress response indicators are activated when something happened that puts you back in that mentality, right? So going back to like PTSD, I'm from Chicago. I wouldn't want to be any other place, right? I'm from Chicago. When I hear anything that pop, 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 kick, kick, da, da, I think someone's shooting. Sometimes I move, sometimes I don't, right? Because I've really been in shootouts that if I move, that could have been my life. If I don't move and get gone, that's going to be my life. So it's like, again, that's a trauma People think trauma also is like physical abuse. Do you know, and this is what I learned from the book as well. Do you know that a natural disaster is a trauma? A natural, so if you've experienced the people that had to experience Hurricane Katrina, they're traumatized. As a child, my childhood home, I think I was eight or nine, went up in flames. Literally, I watched Everything that my mother and I own go into flames. Okay. That's why now, even when I turn on the stove, I turn into caveman. <laughs> like, like, because I'm traumatized, right? I even staying in condos and apartments. I even in even in a house. If it's too, if it's too close next to the next house, I'm traumatized. If I see an open flame, <laughs> Bunsen burner to a candle 
I, it, it, it's it's a toxic like stress and it's a trigger as soon as I see it and it had an adverse experience on me to where maybe I'm in a certain element where fire should be a good thing right but to me and the effect that it had on my brain see people also underestimate the brain I have a therapist he's my hypnotherapist shout out to him he really gave me the realest thing that I could have ever learned in this stage of my life and I've learned a lot OK, but when I used to always say like, oh, my God, I want to know why this happened, why this happened, why the once you understand why it happens, you become it one. And then certain things are not meant for you to understand because your brain's only only job, everything, the heart, keep the blood pumping, the lungs, keep the air. Moving. Your job's only responsibility for your brain is to keep you alive, is to keep you alive. And guess what? It's going to do it by any means necessary. That means if it has to forget a few things, guess what it's going to do? It's going to throw it out. It's going to throw it out because if it keeps it, it kills you. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys to realize on this episode. You keeping a hold to what happened to you. You replaying it in your mind. You anticipating someone else doing it to you. You then continuing it to do it to yourself. You teaching your children this toxicity, your friends, your family, your intimate partner, people in closest proximity to you. You're doing this because you don't want to address. You don't want to let go. You don't want to face. But that's what you're going to have to do because if not, you're killing yourself softly 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 and you're doing it because everything else you felt like was high impact and so harsh that you're trying to at least do it to yourself in a way that you would have hoped someone else did it to you and and that and that's the that's the sickness within itself um also a trauma that children experience that we think is always again physical abuse that divorce that divorce and or the lack of one, right? Parents, oh, I'm sticking together for the kids. The kids would have rather you had not. <laughs> because everything that was endured in that experience was a detriment. Yeah, maybe two incomes are better than one, right? Two parents are better than both. But if y'all both crazy, you're doubling down on a toxicity, on a detriment, right? Big three E's. Three E's, right? And this comes from Dr. Bruce Perry. You have the event, right? Again, it could be a natural disaster, interpersonal abuse, combat. Another E, experience, right? The different reactions that people have. So I love, um, it's a quote that shows two brothers, right? One brother grew up to be very successful, very successful. The other brother, not so much. When they were both asked why they became who they became, they both had the same answer, which was my father wasn't there. My father was abusive. He was a drunk. And they both had the same why, but it manifested into two different what? and two different who's one brother because he experienced the father being very drunk very abrasive very volatile in and out of their life guess what he became just like his father he abuses a substance he abuses other people he abuses himself he he abandons himself he abandons other people because that's what he saw the other brother chose to not do that because that's what he saw I promise you you can have the same experience as someone, but because we are all different experiences, that's why when someone says I'm an experience, what type of experience are you? Are you going to be one that helps me? Or are you going to be one that hurts me? Right? It's the experience. And last but not least, the effects. The effects. What happens after? What happens after, after it's all said and done, after the smoke clears from the fire, after the bodies drop from the war, after the scar and the bruise heals, what happens after? And that's where you go into healing in totality. Even Oprah talks about this. She grew up, she be out of the culture of black culture and feeling like, oh, to beat you and to correct you is to show a form of love which is the worst form of love that you can teach someone because then that's how they end up misconstruing what love truly means and then even if it's not with another person right that may or may not really love them they don't know how to really love themselves right because that's all you know the effects of 
being abused earlier in childhood and then guess what you become the abuser hurt people hurt people so when you meet an adult that's always on 10 and always combative and and ready to just make everything a battle and a fight and a war it's because they put in their mind okay i'll never be the victim again i'll victimize someone before they ever victimize me and then that's how you end up getting the villain that everyone hates, but I guarantee you deep down inside, if we strip the ego and we humble ourselves, we can understand. We can understand. Even in the best movies, the hero and the villain are the same person. Something happened and it just took a different effect in each person. Right. Oprah talks about being a people pleaser. Being yes, yes, yes. Yes, I can do it. Yes, I can do it. It's not even about if you can do it. You don't want to do it. And that's OK. That's okay. You don't even want to do it. And because you put someone else's wants in front of yours, most people ask of you what they truly don't even want. They just want to see if you're going to do it. And guess what? They want to see if you're going to do it because guess what? They don't have the willpower to do it for themselves. So it's easier to make other people do something that you don't want to do. And then it's easier to do something that someone else wants you to do than to rather do what you want to do. And what you need to do. So then you're walking around here and you're saying yes to everything that for sure deserve, deserves a no. You're just, yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I can be it. Yeah, I can go. Yeah, I can do this. Yes, 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 yes. And it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess because a no, again, I say this all the time. No is the best thing that you can learn because that no is going to stop you. Some of us need a break and our traumas don't give us a break again your trauma doesn't care and yes you may not have been responsible for the initial impact of the trauma but you are sure responsible for the continuation of it the continuum of it is your responsibility you are accountable for that and until you recognize that until you become responsible for your own healing we want everybody else everybody else to play doctor to play therapist and that's how a lot of therapists and doctors get played. And the good ones, they know they're being played, right? Because again, we're human. We're not God. We're not omnipresent. So when you go into the doctor and you say, oh yeah, I eat right and I exercise and they're looking at your vitals, they know you lying. They know you're lying. You're telling your therapist one version of the story, half of the story, have your therapist thinking crazy about somebody else when guess what? Your therapist know deep down inside you the crazy one. Whether that person was right or wrong, you're the crazy one. And again, everyone's a little off. Everyone, it's something wrong with all of us. And again, when we humble ourselves to understand that and understand, guess what? Something happened to me. Something happened to you. Something happened to her. Something happened to him. Something happened over there, and that's why this is going on over here. This is this season of this person's life, and this person is stuck in this season of their lives. So this person now lives in the beautiful mansion, and they still have a piss poor mentality like they're in the products be projects because, again, they're a product of their environment. Certain people have now understood, okay, I need to exercise. I need to eat right. Now their body looks well, but their mind and their spirit is still trash. It's polluted. It's polluted. So they look the best that they've ever looked in life, but guess what? They feel the worst. They don't feel at all. They've checked out. The book talks about that. Sometimes you have to check out for safety reasons. When you're in a situation where your mind and your body has made up, we're probably not going to be able to get up out of this. Let me brace myself. Your body, that's why the body is amazing. The body is going to slow down. Your blood flow is going to slow down. Your heart's going to slow down. It's going to release certain hormones. It's going to brace you and almost act as like a... um almost like a um, pain reliever so you don't feel it all the way. Like, And then for you to just escape. This happens a lot of the time when women experience rape. Because at the end of the day, a man is not going to be able to out strength a man, even on a good day. So then when your body says, OK, I can't get out of this, let me let me go to this place. When a lot of people have been raised in abusive and abrasive homes, when someone lashes out at them, they go into because at that point, it's like, OK, I can't stop this. 
let me just endure, right? But let me tell you something. You always play it smart. Even if you're being, it doesn't even have to be sexual. Even if you're being assaulted, you're being robbed. Certain stuff is not worth it. You need to get out. And if you try to fight in that moment, someone isn't going to make it out. Okay. So sometimes you have to play it smart. But again, because effects have lasting tendencies, when you escape in that moment, eventually you won't be able to escape forever. You're going to have to revisit that moment and work through it. You're going to have to, and you deserve to, you deserve to. So again, what happened to you? What happened to me? Why am I like this? Why am I so angry? Why am I so sad? Why am I so quick to give up? Why, why do I feel like everyone is against me? Why am I raising my voice instead of my argument? Why is everything an argument? Why do I think I have to get physical instead of using my words? Why don't I really believe that I'm worth more? What happened? What happened? Again, is it is something wrong with all of us? But again, once we figure out what is wrong, then we figure out how to right the wrong and we're responsible for righting a wrong. I know it's not fair. Life is not fair. Yes, you didn't do it to yourself, but now you're doing it to yourself. Now you are. The person that hurt and harmed you, they long gone, literally and figuratively. They gone. They on to the next victim. Or you know what the crazier thing about people that hurt you in one season? And this is where you could tell people who really need healing is when they can't let go of what someone did, especially when the person that was the villain in one scenario heals themselves because the villain was once a victim some other place so when you feel like this person hurt me this person took something from me this person put something on me that I didn't deserve how do they get their healing how do they get their freedom because they chose it and guess what they chose themselves and you're still cho choosing them you're not even choosing you you're choosing them you deserve to choose you you are the only choice you are the only option you are the best option you are the best choice no one else deserves to be picked, to be chosen, to be selected, but you. You get to choose where you go from here. You maybe didn't choose where you once came from, but you get to choose where you go moving forward. So move, move, move swiftly, move, move carefully, but just move. Just move. Don't stay stagnant. Don't stay in that dark room. Don't stay in that hole. Don't stay in the fire. Get up out of the rain. If you're going to weather the conditions, <laughs> harvest, harvest, harvest. You just, you just going, you just going to keep so and so and so and don't reap, reap it, reap it. Get your reward, get your reward. You already endured the risk. Get the reward, be the reward, be the conqueror, be the champion, be the warrior that you already are. Again, it sucks. We give it too quickly to the devil. Oh, the devil is the devil. No, God trusted you with the experience because maybe the experience ends when you take ownership of the experience. When you stop the effects of it, right? And you make the event something that can prevent the next person from enduring, Again, I thank you guys so, 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 so much. This one was a good one. We're going to unpack this a little bit more. Again, I am Sincerely Sadrina. I thank you guys for tuning in to Sentimental Value Podcast. Again, the book, the book, What Happened to You? A Conversation on Trauma, Resilience, and Healing. Um, if we had enough time, but we, we'll never have enough time, right? Like life is its own book, its own journey. Um, but if you guys want to know more about the book, please go click the link below in the description box and shop my Amazon bookstore list. OK, OK. The book club is 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 something good. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram and TikTok, sincerely, Sadrina, make sure you do that. Make sure you follow Sentimental Value Podcast on Instagram. And if you guys have any suggestions for topics, please let me know. Make sure you email sincerely, Sadrina at gmail.com. And again, I thank you. I love you. You're going to be OK. You are going to be okay. And guess what? If you're not okay, that's okay too. 
that's okay. I love you. Good night. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you are. And until next time.